Hello. I just came back outside from outside with my sweetest daughter Malachi. And before I go into my usual how do I start my days, um, like routine, which is fit check, Bible, prayer. Um, I want to show all both of our fits because it's just great. So this is like not light pink. It's different and it has this very like stretchy top to the pants. And then y'all don't go on, oh, okay? But Malachi has been in her element right now. Hey, Boba. I mean, go on, but I'm saying, like, don't pass out from the cuteness. Because <laughs> literally, she is in her element. Look at this tutu, y'all. This was today's fit. <laughs> I just found my eyeglasses. I was looking for my eyeglasses all day. But basically, y'all, um, she's going to be chilling on the bed with her little toys. Okay. This was my bag. I carried out. Um, I would say for the curly hair girls and maybe curly hair guys that may be watching this, like, y'all, Vaseline actually does great things for your hair because I only literally put water and Vaseline in my hair. I'm not even capping. I wash my hair. I don't brush in the shower. And then I basically put Vaseline in my hair. And then I brush. And look, this is dry. This is a totally dry. So, I sometimes put like coconut oil, cocoa butter on my hair, like on my scalp, probably once every week. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been doing it more often, and I don't know for sure if I like that. But yeah, um, now it's time to go into the Bible. Um, and I think I want to share like. Uh, I want to do one talking about praising the Lord. Yes. She's currently reaching for her little teddy bear toy. You'll see it. I call the big one. Um, I, oh, I forgot. It's something like Ted Die. I don't like Teddy because it sounds kind of masculine. Ted Die and like Lie Lie. <laughs> Y'all don't get at me for that, but I like it. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, the Bible verse. And these are going to be some short verses. Um, it says, uh, oh my goodness, I like this. Okay. So, um, So, uh, one of my favorite psalms is Psalms 28, uh, Psalms 24 verses 8 to 10. And it says, Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory, Salah. And then I just wanted to Psalms 150. Um, I want to read all of it. So Psalms 150, verses 1 to 6, which is the whole Psalms. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. So it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments. 
and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I'll read it one more time. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. I want to learn what that means, okay? Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the, ha with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you see there's actions like dancing. There's source, different sorts of instruments. Um, and playing these instruments is praise. It's interesting because sometimes we think praise is just voice, singing, but even playing an instrument. Now, you guys, um, before I go straight into prayer, I do want to talk about this. Actually, I'll make another video about this, okay? Because this is very, very deep. Um, because if you think about it, you guys, praise is so much it's singing it's dancing it's playing instruments right but it says praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness so this is when in the hardest times of your life when you feel like everything you love have been squandered you've been hurt you've been betrayed so bad to the point it's like everyone like it's like literally you feel like even you've inherited inherited this sort of shame because of what has been done to you or like you realize you have been betrayed and disrespected on such a huge level you have to praise God because that is how you heal that is how you it says um God inhabits the praises of his people that is how you get to develop a stronger relationship with God and um uh and be able to really get close to the lord in a time when you feel like god why did this happen to me like this is exactly why i didn't want it's when everything is not going your way but you're still giving god that fresh holy praise when i say fresh it's pure like pure like loving um without bitterness and wrath but just pure loving praise to the lord you're bringing in like you know, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the Lord's Prayer, it's like you're bringing in God into the situation. You're bringing in a realm of peace, of joy, of spiritual prosperity. Because for those moments, you feel like the achings of this life like pass away, like in peace. As you praise Him, as you let your mind just focus on His excellent goodness and look away from what has occurred to you. It's easier said than done, but when you do it, the fruit is so beautiful and worthwhile it's like it says um in psalms 22 psalms chapter 22 verse 3 in the king james version because that's what i like to read but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest the praises of israel i read it again but thou art holy O thou that inhabitest the praises as of israel and then there is um what job said and a lot of people say this um, and I think this is important. Okay. Um, is Job 13 verse 15. And he says, Job says, though he, God, slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own, my own ways before him. So here he's saying, he's in this conflict where he feels like, all these evil things happened to him, but he was really walking in righteousness before. Um, he was obviously not trying to sin. and He was obeying God and making covenants. Like, for instance, he made a covenant that he will not think upon another lady, like think upon another person. He was really trying to keep himself holy in all ways and follow him um, in, in fear um, and of God. He was trying to follow God, and all these things happened to him. And he was wondering, like, he was getting accused it was because he was unrighteous. And he was very sure that he was trying his best to follow the Lord. 
um, because he was following the word. He was trying to follow the word. And and he was really respected, um, rich man with a lot of children. And his family died. His He lost all his wealth. He lost all his respect. And then he lost his health. And he was cast out of the city. And he was basically homeless living in the side of the city. And he was like, why did all these things happen to me? And it was really because the devil wanted to test basically tell God that God Job is only there for really the benefits that God gave for the physical benefits and not really because he he was a devout devout devout, devout follower of God and then what happened was Job Job basically um Job basically um was like like um he was basically like okay so He was like, I can't do this. Like, like, what's going on, God? Well, I didn't do anything to deserve this. What's going on? And then what happened? The Lord was like, Hey, like, um, he God ended up recomp like everything he lost. He got double. So he actually was better off after the trial than before the trial. But the thing that happened was that um. The thing that happened was that he was kind of like something's off with God, not me. Because he was seeing the situation, not understanding. It was a trial of his faith and of who he was in relationship with God. Like his how he viewed God, if he really loved God. So um, he ended up knowing God deeper and knowing him, knowing him after all the trials and tribulations. And I just really want to stress this... Um, Um, that it says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. So it's like establishing that relationship with God and that trust with God is crucial because if you don't, what happens is you become corrupted and you start walking in corruption. And once you start walking in corruption, you start to be farther from God because God is holy and there is no corruption in him. And then what happens is you start walking in curses because you're walking in disobedience and the pain causes you and drives you to sin. And when the pain causes and drives you to sin, then what happens is you made a situation that was bad already worse because of situations outside. Like, let's say someone betrayed you, someone cheated on you, etc. Because of situations outside, you will let darkness come within. And then that isn't that what the devil wants? Like, you don't give what the devil wants. Give what God wants. Because God, he loves you. And he will see you through. Okay? But right now, it's a test of your faith. And about if you will truly praise god i'll read this one verse again it says praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness will you praise god according to his excellent greatness or do you only praise him when things go well for you this is humbling and it's like it's like honestly when you're going through a lot it's like you're a sacrifice for the lord and you're sacrifice for the lord and and you're giving praise and I can't believe like God will probably God will see that and be like wow she's still praising me amidst her trials um, and then we'll um, read Psalms 23 and Psalms 91 um, because those two are kind of like it speaks on like even through your trials even through the valley of the shadow of death what God does for his people he has compassion on, on his people and if you die on earth for his name, know that you're in heaven. And um, your death was not in vain ever. Um, okay. So let's go through those two psalms. And I want, I'm just reading these two psalms so you guys could hear how God is. Um, and that's why the word of God is so important. Because we hear who he is. And, um... Let's read Psalms 23 first. Um, 
and that's why you have to read all of the word. I believe that, you know, it's not mandatory. God, you know, you know, you need to know Jesus. And Jesus, you can't go to the Father God without his son, Jesus Christ. Um, and you need to receive the Holy Spirit. They're three in one. Um, Father God in the flesh, as the son is Jesus Christ, who gives us his Holy Spirit, which is um, basically his spirit. It belongs to God. Um, uh, th those three are very important um, and you need to know the gospel that Jesus Christ is God he is God in flesh and his blood shed on the cross for us cleanses us whenever we sin okay um, when we repent and we receive his blood and we turn from our sins you know it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life so we have to repent and believe in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to ask him for faith. And we must hold him tightly, steadfast, and be steadfast in, towards him. It says in Psalms 23 in the King James Version, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, and then, I don't know for sure if you guys could really hear, but I feel like I encourage you guys to go seek this word um, out for yourself in the King James Version. And take your time and really meditate on it um, and read it. Because it is a very intimate place when you open up your Bible and you just commune with God in his word. Um, it says here, Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread, tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou tram trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I love Psalms 91. Y'all need to read it. I pray, Holy Father, I'll do the Lord's Prayer for the end of prayer today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Father God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the glory, and thine is the power. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.